The Whistler. Sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Whistler's strange story, Autumn Song. Sidney Sheldon stared dully at the happy groups on the platform outside his compartment window. In a few minutes, many of them would be boarding the cross-country streamliner, just as he had. For most of them, it was Destination New York for business or pleasure. For Sydney, it was Destination New York, perhaps for oblivion. No one was there to see him off, wish him well, and tell him to hurry back to Los Angeles. Carlson at Mammoth Studios had handed him a one-way ticket to New York and told him never to come back to Hollywood. As the streamliner eased effortlessly underway, Sidney managed a sardonic smile. He was on his way out in the grand manner of Hollywood. Sheila. Well, Sheila, what are you... You didn't really think I'd let you get away from me, did you, Sid? Well, I've got to go east. Just a quick trip for business, you know. Really? Yes, you see, I've got a... Thanks, I will sit down. I've got a feeling the story's going to be good. Now, listen to me, Sheila. Why, Sid? I've listened to you for a long time. I don't like where it's got me. That career you promised me. What a publicity agent you turned out to be. Great. I'm glad you feel that way. Because I'm sick and tired of trying to palm off a no-talent doll like you as an actress. Look who's talking no talent. You've been tossed out of Hollywood. He has a one-way ticket to New York. Take it and never come back. Unquote Carlson. Every studio in town has your number, and it's zero. And you know why? Because you fouled up every publicity stunt I've handled the past year. Whether it had anything to do with you or not, you always did a walk-on at the wrong time. And now if you're smart, you'll pull a walk-off this time. Right off at this train at the first stop. I'm not getting off, Sidney. I'm going to ride all the way, Chicago, New York. And even then, I'm still not getting off. What are you talking about? I'm talking about us. Neither of us can go back, Sid. You to the studios, and me to the husband I left for you. I didn't tell you to leave him. Not in so many words. Let's skip it. That part's my worry. It's all your worry. Now go on, beat it, Sheila. I've got my own troubles. I know. I'm one of them. Your biggest, I expect. I told you to beat it, to run along. All right, Sidney. That's the way you want it. If you feel differently later on, I'm in car 179. I can't hear you. And like I said, I'm not getting off. Nighty night, Sidney. You watch her go, feel the cold rage mount within you. You try to tell yourself that Sheila's the real cause of all your troubles. But deep down, you know that's not true. Sheila's a problem, yes. You wish you'd never met her, made all those promises about her career. Now she's like a millstone around your neck. You'd like to strangle her, wouldn't you, Sidney? But after a while, you decide to try to forget about her, put her out of your mind. You go to the diner, order your dinner, and lean back slightly. React as you recognize the voice of the man sitting back to back with you. An important film executive, Sidney, E.J. Payton, imparting some very interesting information to his dinner party. Yes, I suppose this craze for older stars started when Pinza made such a smash in South Pacific. Pinza did a lot for the so-called older star, all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Is this chap Norman Hale you're going to sign in New York? I remember him. <laughs> I remember I was a boy the first time I saw him. Oh, yes. Same of Norman Hale was the box office word. Uh, I'd prefer you didn't mention it around on the train. I mean that my studio is after him. Oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> Hale doesn't know it himself, but he's just right for us. This picture autumn song that we're going to make you. Think? Oh, oh yes. Uh, it's about a star from the old silent era, isn't it? Right. Hey, this steak is good. You almost can't wait to finish your dinner, can you, Sidney? But you realize that you might as well. Yes, because the streamliner won't stop anywhere that'll fit your plans before Albuquerque. Meanwhile, you've other things to attend to. Oh, Porter, Porter. Can you help me a moment? Yes, sir. You looking for somebody? Oh, yes, Porter. This is car 179. Yes, sir. A friend of mine, Miss Sheila Martin. Oh, Miss Martin. That's room at B, sir. Oh, well, thank you, Porter. Well, but I, I think the lady is in the club car. Well, it's all right. I'll find her later. I'll go see you. No, 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 no. Never mind. Never mind. Oh. You start out of the car. Turn in time to see the porter disappear into another room to make up the bed. You move swiftly down the aisle to Sheila's roomette. Inside, you find what you want in a matter of seconds. In her overnight bag, wrapped in a nightgown. The roll of bills which you were certain she wouldn't carry in her purse. You take most of the bills out, wrap the few remaining ones around a roll of cleansing tissue you find in her bag so she won't discover the loss immediately. Then you hurry back to your own car. Yes, sir? I'd, uh, I'd like accommodations to New York. First plane out, please. I have space on flight 23. Leave here in two hours. Uh, that'll get me in New York ahead of the streamliner? Oh, yes, sir. You'll be there in 12 hours. 12 hours? Oh, good, good. I'll take that space. One way to New York. And now back to the whistler. It's a windfall, isn't it, Sidney? The chance knowledge you picked up on the train. Yes, as you step from your plane in New York, you're many hours ahead of the train you left at Albuquerque, carrying E.J. Payton, the motion picture producer, who is on his way to search the city for Norman Hale, the one-time silent picture star. With luck, you can find Norman Hale first. That's why you no sooner check into a hotel... Then you begin the weary rounds of second-rate theatrical agencies. At one, you finally get a lead. Make your way out to an astonishingly good address. You wonder, as you press the buzzer, if perhaps they weren't all wrong about Norman Hale. That he might have saved some of his early, fabulous earnings. As you stand there waiting, you pray that he didn't. Hope that he's in a bad financial position. Yes? I'm uh, looking for Mr. Hale. Norman Hale, the actor? Have you an appointment? Well, no. You see, I... Uh... The nature of your business, please. Well, frankly, I uh, represent some motion picture interests who would like to contact Mr. Hale. Motion picture interests? My dear fellow, I don't believe Mr. Hale would be interested. You see, he wouldn't want to leave New York. Uh, the excitement, the glamour of the city, the close proximity to the theaters. Mr. Hale. What? <laughs> I might have known. And posing as the butler. <laughs> you were always pulling something like that. Please, Mr. Hale, may I come in? The name is Shelton. Sidney Shelton. Why, uh, all right, Mr. Shelton. Enter. Thank you, sir. Well, this is a beautiful place you have here. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, have you a contract, Mr. Shelton? Are you actually prepared to make a business proposition? Well, uh, no, sir, not exactly. You see... I have an idea, a possibility for both of us. Ha! Possibility. For making a picture with a has-been, an old man, a, a profile from the past. Exactly, sir. And if you weren't so 
Well, so well off here, you might consider that there are still fans everywhere who remember you and love you. Young men, I am not well off. This aristocratic establishment, it isn't even mine. (laughs) How do you like that? But I don't understand. Alas, Norman Hale must now be grateful to be a caretaker of another man's house. A caretaker? You? Yes, the owner's in Europe. I'm a fortunate man. I could be huddling in a tenement somewhere. Well, you'll never have to worry about that again, Mr. Hale, if you just listen to me. I've found a great part for you. I read a book, Mr. Hale, Autumn Song. Uh, and that, that, that was a play, wasn't it? Uh, well, and that's what I meant to say, a play. I'm sorry. See, I'm excited now. Oh, Mr. Hale, you should play that part. Oh, yes, uh, Oliver. Oliver Wentworth. Oliver Wentworth. Oh, Norman, you are Oliver Wentworth. And I can get you that part. I know it. Will you believe in me? Will you give me the chance to make you believe in yourself? You're a persuasive man, Shelton. Here, but, uh... here I, I brought a contract. I'll just sign there, Mr. Hale, making me your personal manager. An hour later, you're on your way back to your hotel, Sydney. Only a brief stop at the theatrical agency which gave you the lead to Norman Hale. Five dollars in the hand of a man you talk to assures the fact that motion picture producer E.J. Payton will now be directed to you instead of to Norman Hale himself. It's late afternoon of the following day, and you're sitting in your apartment when you receive a phone call. It's the call you've been expecting, isn't it, Sidney? Yes, from E.J. Payton, the Hollywood film executive. Yes, sir, that's right. I'm representing Norman Hale. Well, then we can talk. I have a little something in mind for him. Well, I don't know. Norman sold on the idea of doing a play. Well, for his own sake, then, talk him out of it. Now, let's speak frankly, Mr. Shelton. Your Norman Hale is passe, a ghost of the silence. People just aren't interested in him anymore. You are, Mr. Payton? Yes, yes, in a way. Look, Mr. Shelton, I don't like to discuss business over the telephone. Uh, When can we get together? Well, let me see. What do you say about lunch tomorrow? Uh, Victor's on 45th? Good. And have Norman Hale there, too. Well, I'll see if I can arrange it. I can't promise, though. You're pleased, aren't you, Sidney? And your only concern now is how to get the biggest price you can for Norman Hale's services. It won't be easy, will it, when you're dealing with a man like Peyton? And you wish you had something more to sell than just Norman Hale himself. You decide a publicity stunt would do it, Sidney. Something big. And Peyton's studio would be eager to cash in on it. You spend the rest of the day thinking about this. Finally, that evening, the answer comes to you, most unexpectedly. Hello, Sid. Sheila. Oh, well, Sheila, look, I'm sorry about... The money you stole on the train? No, you're not. I knew it was you right away. But I'll get it back. And more. Of course you will, baby, of course. I was going to get in touch with you, but I've been busy all day. A new client... I know. I traced you down through the theatrical agency. Oh, really? Really? Well, Will I... there be anything in this new deal for little Sheila? You know there'd better be. Oh, naturally. Oh, I haven't forgotten you, Sheila. And it's going to be big, baby. Yes, sir, a nice big fat publicity stunt for Norman Hale. He's my new client. And I'm working out something for you, too, Sheila. Like what? An overdose of sleeping pills? Get engaged to Norman Hale? <laughs> Maybe both? Wait a minute. You think that's funny? What is it this time, Sidney? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You and Norman Hale. That's what I was afraid of. But give me the details anyway. Can't we eat, Sidney? I'm famished. Well, let's wait for Peyton, huh, Norman? Oh, he's late. It's a quarter after one now. I know, Norman, I know. Uh, Are you sure you said Victor's Restaurant? Yes, of course I said Victor's, and Peyton will be here. You don't suppose he's changed his mind? Oh, relax, Norman, will you please? Very well. I'll have another martini. You've had four already. Norman! Norman, hey! I I beg your pardon, miss. Norman, Norman, I'd recognize you anywhere. Have we met, my dear? Met? Met? Oh! 
Oh, no. No, but I've dreamed of meeting you ever since I was a little girl. Oh, how I've dreamed of this moment. Really? Well, well. From that very first time I saw you. What picture was that, my dear? I worshipped you then. I, I still do. Norman. Oh, Norman. Oh, miss, please, just a moment. Stay out of this Not... old man. I'll handle it. Oh, just think I finally found miss, you. please. No, please. let me go. Let please. me go. Norman. Don't let them tell you. Wait a Wait minute. Wait Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You struggle to keep a straight face, don't you, Sidney, as Sheila clings desperately to Norman, pouring out her adoration for him. And during the confusion of the next few moments, you notice Peyton standing at the door, watching it all. Then finally, when Sheila is led away, sobbing bitterly, Peyton comes over to your table. Well, that was something, wasn't it? Oh, Mr. Peyton, you saw what happened? Yes, yes, I saw. Uh, Norman, this is Mr. Peyton. Norman. What? Oh, oh, how do you do, sir? That poor girl, that poor girl, so madly in love with me. Here, uh, sit down here, Mr. Peyton. In love with me all these years. Did you hear her sob, Sidney? Did you? Yes, yes, sure, sure. She's really crazy about you, Norman. Yes, I'd say that was quite a performance. Quite a performance. Performance? For uh, my benefit, eh, Mr. Shelton? You think this whole thing was staged? Wasn't it? How dare you suggest such a thing? Anyone can plainly see that girl is desperately in love with me. And why not? Why shouldn't she be? Norm, Norm, please. A good day, Mr. Payton. Good day. Sir. Norman, wait, wait a minute. Let him go, Mr. Sheldon. We have things to talk about. No, 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 he's pretty sore. I'll have to see if I can cool him down. But uh, you... Make don't... it at Norman's place in an hour. 467 Kenton Place. I'm sorry, Sidney. I shouldn't have lost my temper that way. Okay, okay. Let's forget it. Tell me something. That, uh, that affair, it really wasn't staged, was it? Oh, Norman, of course not. I didn't think so. I could see it was real. I, I saw it in her eyes, Sidney. I'm not easily fooled, you know. She was rather an attractive girl, wasn't she? A real doll. Oh, uh, just couldn't help it, I suppose. Falling in love with me, I mean... I, uh, have I ever told you about the Countess Delgano? Have I? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, let's save it for some other time, will you please? Peyton's waiting for us in the study. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, very well, my boy. Well, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Peyton. That's quite all right. I was just admiring your paintings, Mr. Hale. Oh, nothing much, really. Picked them up here and there during my travels. This one, for example, I turned up in London while I was on a personal appearance tour. The English loved me, you know. Fine people, the English. I remember uh, so shall well... Shall we sit down, gentlemen? I, I remember so... Oh, get that like a good chap, will you, Sidney? Certainly. Hello? How are they, Sid? Who? Uh, speak up, I can't hear you. Are they there? Yes, yes. Okay, go into your act. I'll see you later. Who is it, uh, Sidney? I, I think it's that girl again, the one in the restaurant. Oh, really? Hello? Yes? What? Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what's wrong? What's she says wrong? she's calling from her hotel. It says if you don't see her, she'll jump off the roof. What? Hello. Hello, oh, where are you? Where? What? I can't understand. Stop crying, Here, please. give me that phone. She hung up. We must do something. I think she said she was at the Grayville or the Brave. Grayville, not far from here. Mr. Peyton, call the police. Tell them to get over to the girls' hotel right away. Come on, Norman, come on. <laughs> Too late, Norman. There she is up there. Where? Where? Are On you? the ledge. The ledge. The fourth oh, floor. Good Lord. Uh, what did you say her name is? Sheila. 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 Don't jump. Don't do it. She can't hear. Stand back, Norman. please. Everybody, stand back. Give room to the police, the ambulance. Clear that sidewalk over there. You hear it? Clear it. What are we going to do with? If only I could talk. Wait a minute, Norman. Wait. Do you hear that? Stand back. That policeman talking on the public address system. Yes. Put those but... people back over there. That of corner. course. That's it. Come on. Come on. Are you ready, Norm? Ready. All right. Here's the microphone, Ro Romeo. Now, there's your Juliet, up there on the ledge. Now, come on. Start talking and make it good. She 
Sheila! Sheila! This is Norman! This is Norman Hale! Listen to me, darling! Listen to me, please! You stand back in the crowd. Look at the faces around you as Norman Hale begins to play the scene in his most dramatic fashion. And the crowd loves it. You're certain of that, aren't you, Sidney? And you know that close by, Peyton is watching, listening. Then finally, the exciting climax as Sheila steps off the ledge and goes back into her hotel room. Peyton is very impressed. When can we talk, Mr. Shelton? In the morning, Mr. Payton, over coffee and the headlines. Hmm? All right, all right. I must say you handled the situation magnificently, Mr. Hale. Oh, thank you, thank you. I wasn't the least bit worried, you know. I was certain I could talk her out of her madness. Sure, sure. You can't help it, can you, Norman? I mean, because you're so attractive to women. You're so right, old boy. That evening, back in your apartment, you're pleased with the way everything has turned out, aren't you, Sidney? Yes, and you congratulate yourself. You've put it over. Peyton will have to come to your terms now, if he wants to capitalize on the publicity. Sign a long-term contract with Norman Hale. Then shortly before midnight, you have a visitor. Sheila. What do you mean, now what? What's the next move? That stunt this afternoon went over big for little Sheila, but we're not going to leave it at that, are we? Ah, look, sweetheart, look. You got yourself a million bucks worth of publicity. I set it up for you free of charge. You take it from there. But I thought you were... I'm going to be very busy from now on, baby. Norman and I will probably be leaving for the coast in a few days. Norman! Sure. The stunt was all for him, wasn't it? He was the star. I was just an extra. You didn't do badly. No, that's right. I didn't. And suddenly, I've just gotten an idea how I can do better. What? What do you mean? You had me write a suicide note, remember? To make it all look authentic when I was going to jump from the hotel. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, I've still got that suicide note right here in my purse. I wonder what the reporters will do to your story when I tell them this whole thing was a fake. What? Now, wait a minute, Sheila. Uh-uh. I have just enough time to catch the morning papers before they go to press. Bright idea of yours, that suicide note. Yes. What is it? Thanks for reminding me, baby. Let me go. Oh, sure, sure. I'll let you go. Only when I do, it'll be out the window. Oh. Because you are going to jump. And your suicide note will prove that you jumped. Turn in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. It was the only way, wasn't it, Sidney? You had to kill Sheila to prevent her from exposing you and the publicity stunt you staged for the benefit of your client, the former matinee idol, Norman Hale. And so you pushed her out the window of your apartment. And now a crowd is gathered in the streets below. And you hurry downstairs. The story you'll tell is very clear in your mind. Then, when the police arrive... You say this girl jumped from your apartment, Mr. Shelton? Yes, yes, that's right, officer. It happened so quickly I was unable to stop her. Mm -hmm. Oh, the poor girl, she did it because of Norman Hale... You've heard of him, the actor? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, is this the same girl who tried to commit suicide this afternoon? Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. She burst into my apartment about 20 minutes ago. Demanded to see Norman, I tried to stall her, but she showed me a suicide note she'd written, and then she jammed it in her purse. Before I could stop her, she ran to the window. And... Oh, well, you know the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this the note? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, looks like you're right, mister. Pardon me, officer. Yeah? This guy's story doesn't hold up. What? Huh? See here, what do you mean? Well, I was standing across the street when this happened. I saw it all. This girl didn't jump. She was pushed. 
And this guy pushed her. That's ridiculous. Now, hold on, Mr. Shelton. I saw him do it. Yeah, who are you? I'm Jim Fergus, private investigator. And after this girl apparently tried to commit suicide this afternoon, Norman Hale was so worried about her, he hired me to keep an eye on her. Norman Hale hired you? Yes. Mr. Hale said the girl was nuts about him, crazy in love with him. Let that whistle be your signal for the whistler each Sunday night at the same time. Featured in tonight's story were Wally Mayer, Virginia Gregg, Herbert Rawlinson, Jess Kirkpatrick, and Herbert Lifton. Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch. And with... Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when this will bring you another strange story by The Whistler, entitled Danger is a Beautiful Blonde, in which a pickup date with a beautiful girl leads a young man to an attractive mansion and a dead man. Marvin Miller speaking... This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.